What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheetaber. I hope you all had a great weekend. Uh, we're back to at it on Monday here. We've got some basketball. We've got some baseball. We've got a lot of weather concerns with the uh, the baseball. So something we're going to have to keep an eye on as we go game by game. We'll touch on it maybe a little bit, but I will be live. Uh, Sheets, I'm all, I always say I'll be live, but I always hope always hope Sheets is there. It's always much better when Sheets is there. But uh, I should, I, I'm definitely good tonight. Okay, awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll get into it and go game by game. But Sheets, any sort of overall thoughts other than just that there's some serious weather we have to worry about? Yeah, I mean, there's some there's a couple of kind of obvious chalk pitchers, and there's a cop is a obvious chalk hitting environment and like every other baseball slate it's a question of how much chalk do you want to eat and how much you know and, and what type of contest you're in and how to pair things together and line up construction and things like that you know um i've actually been running really poor in my um in my bigger buy-ins um actually when i say i've been running poor i mean that i've just picked the wrong lineups to put in them <laughs> <laughs> like, like I've, I've had some good lineups in, 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 the, in, the, in the smaller buy-ins, but whenever I decide to put in the big buy-ins, it's not even that I'm getting like a sweat and close. I'm scoring like, like 40 fantasy points total out of my hitting. Like I'll, I'll like stack the Yankees against Zimmerman, for example, and score like one run, you know, right, and right, uh, right. at least I'm not getting heartbroken. I'm just, I'm just, just getting blown out of those, but, but that's, that's fine. I'm pretty happy with my process and uh, hashtag is baseball. We'll get there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, let's get into it because I think that there are going to be some, some, you know, again, with the pitching, we're still going to have to like, I just think that's my big takeaway is that we really, really have to try to decide on a daily basis um, whether or not we want to even give any credit to any pitcher that's popular because they sort of all have the same kind of downside. I mean, not any pitcher that's popular, but we really can't expect a leash. I don't think on anybody for a little bit longer. There's a couple guys who will get a little bit of a leash and we'll talk about some of those, but I don't know. It's just that that's the part of the early part of the season. That's, that's going to be tough. Nobody again in our chat, all you hear is complaints and, and guys in our discord, we, we don't have the right to complain about pitchers getting pulled early. This is what's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. We're not caught off guard. And the other thing is let's stop complaining because one guy hits two home runs one day and it doesn't hit any the next day. That's just the way baseball works. We don't need to complain about it. We just need to figure out, Hey, how can we make the best process and come up with the best situation we can to give ourselves a chance to win? Anyway, absolutely. all that said, I'm going to jump into jump out real quick on this first one, because there will be an unknown pitcher that I like. Wait, um, let me share my screen first. Oh yeah. Pull your screen up. Okay. Um, There'll be an unknown pitcher in, in any game that's just not going to play. So in a game that's not going to play. But again, he'll be unowned if he would, if even if it does play. Uh, I would take shots on Josiah Gray if this game played. Other than that, I have no problem stacking. I know he's been decent enough. The, the first two starts out, I guess he was, you know, whatever he is. I don't even know. Call it decent, whatever. Um, I'm always still going to be willing to pick on Bumgarner and a bad bullpen behind him. Again, this game very, very, very likely will not play but I'm just throwing out what I would do. Should it play sheets? Anything you got to add on this one? Now, one other thing that we should, we should uh, also uh, throw out there, I guess, for the people that may be, may be new to DFS and new to baseball DFS or whatever, is that as, as dangerous as this game is, um, Washington games are particularly fishy. Um, yeah. Washington, Washington will cancel games with pure sunshine. I mean, like, <laughs> like they they will pull a quick trigger trigger. And so if you're the slightest bit worried about a, about a Washington game, I would just presume it, it in general that it just freaking postpones. That's just the way it is. And that's, by the way, that's a perfect example of if that's like a yellow game in like Washington or yellow orange and you, and you play it and then it, it rains out and it never rains. You I'm telling you right now, you're not allowed to complain because we told you in advance right. that, that, that right. this definitely happens. Uh, Fortunately, it's like you said, there's nobody I, you really needed to play from this game anyway. Um, but I do agree. I think I think Gray would have been kind of a fun, uh, a fun pivot off of off of very chalky guys in his price range. Right. Mm -hmm. That uh, that you could play, but uh, not today. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen today. So I'm going to we'll let's move on to the next one. You want to start us off on. Uh... Yeah. So 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 the uh, the, the Stacy, the this is sheets of forecast uh, is basically saying um that she says i'm going she's, she's going out to play canasta tonight but she's got to keep an eye on the weather because it's supposed to like really really pour later on the night um that's that's what she told me and i went and looked at other weather side that's it seems to be what the uh what the uh what the what the consensus is so it's uh 
it's a it's it's a dangerous spot and it's also a spot that you know without the weather concerns you'd have to make a you know you'd have to make a decision on alex cobb at 7500 you know uh He's, uh, he's, uh, you know, as a point, on a point per dollar basis, he would be rated as a pretty good play. Um, and McGill, McGill at 9,300, I certainly don't, wouldn't want to do that. And from a hitting perspective, I would, you know, consider, I don't know, I would consider both of these. I mean, the Mets would certainly be a, would be uh, an off the board option. Um, but uh, I don't know. I just think there's too much weather nonsense for me to really consider all that much. Yeah, I sort of with you a little bit on this. I, I think you could make an argument for basically almost any side, except for I don't have interest in the San Francisco stack. Um, I, I do think McGill would be in play for me if this game plays. I mean, and now you two hundred, yeah, yeah. He's he's basically the highest scoring player on the slate, I think. Okay. Um, and he, you know he's put up twenty five and twenty four fantasy points in two in two games. I actually think that there's an uh, there's upside for Cobb, and I think there's massive downside for him. I could see getting behind some of these. Mets bats. I just don't, I don't, again, I'm a little nervous about this game playing as well. And I'm just double checking the, the way that the weather looks in this game. Cause the run total as, as it should be low, it shouldn't be this low. Uh, so yeah, you do have strong winds blowing in from right. So I don't think you'd, I think you'd only want to stick with pitchers probably just based on, on those facts. It's cold and you have, you know, 48 miles an hour, I'm sorry, a uh, 16 miles an hour wind currently projected to be blowing in from right field. So I would probably stay away from the bats based on that information. Um, but I do think both pitchers would be strongly in play if, uh, if this game was a go, I just don't think we, I don't know if we'd want to risk it. All right, Sheets, what do you got for me with Tampa Bay and uh, Chicago here? So as, as to steal Bobby's thunder, as always, I mean, when you're dealing with Chicago games, I mean, you always have to just figure out what's going to happen with the weather or with the wind over there. Um, and, you know, Bobby taught us the first day of playing, you know, DFS is like the difference between, a Chicago, the Cubs with the wind blowing in and the Cubs game with the wind blowing out is, is just two totally different situations, you know? And then you have those other situations where it's like kind of like a, a side to side win where you could either, you know, look at it like, well, it's a favorite one side of the plate was a favorite, whatever it is. So, so these, these Wrigley games are, 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 are pretty fun. You know what I mean? Like, cause you can, cause you can t- t- go totally different ways. Um, and what's interesting is that the Tampa side has McClanahan, who is a freaking fireballer, you know, and, yep. and, and um, the only thing that, well, not the only thing, but one of the things you worry about him is number one, just in general, the leashes of pitchers, uh, you know, this early in the season for openers. Second of all, Tampa with their proclivities to, you know, to, to use their bullpen, you know, so, so uh, McClanahan, as far as his innings might be, somewhat um somewhat concerning but he could certainly you know he can 10 strikeouts in five innings if it uh if it's uh if it, if it blows his way so to speak but i i don't know where the weather is right now but i would certainly take a look at it and if it's if it's certainly you know even if it's blowing wind if it's even partially blowing in or even crosswind i would i think mcclanahan is kind of a is, is, a, is a good uh good gpp play here the wind's blowing out yeah i don't, I don't need any part of that but um but i definitely like that and on um, Chicago, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need Hendricks. I mean, even if even if the wind is blowing in, I just feel as though there's there's better things that I could do. And hitting wise, uh, I really didn't get so much of any of the hitting in this game, even with the wind blow, especially with the wind blowing in. Yeah, uh, the temperatures and the this is the more important thing I think is the temperatures are in the mid 30s, um, the high 30s uh, throughout this game. Uh, you do have very strong wind blowing out 20 miles an hour. Um, oh, really? But, but that doesn't really mean much with, I mean, they're offsetting a little bit. Like the, the 20, the 30, you do some odd degree right. weather is, is not ideal. Uh, I really like McClanahan. I don't even mind uh, if you wanted to take a shot on Hendricks. Um, I, I, I probably won't, wouldn't. I guess you could use like some one-offs, maybe like a Brandon Lau. Like there are some power upside for some of these, especially the lefties, because the wind's carrying that direction, carrying out that way where you can hit a fly ball and it could go. But the problem is it's, it is offset a little bit by the weather. So I'm going to do a little bit more digging uh, on that one before before the six o'clock show, because I, I do think that like I want to, like I like, I, I always want to play Chicago when the wind's blowing out. But when it's this cold and you have two good pitchers, um, 
yeah, I'm going to do it. I have, I don't think there's so, so I want to make something like that. Just my take on the McClanahan thing is the only thing that makes him a little bit more different than any different. It doesn't matter. Like he, he, all the things you said, I, I don't feel like are relevant because he's 8,100. Um, if he was 10, five or 11, five or something like that, then I could understand an argument for it maybe, but it doesn't really matter. He's, he, he's, he's allowed to throw as many pitches as anybody else in baseball. It's not like he's not throwing pitches. It's just, he walks guys and he's, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not necessarily efficient and quick with his outs. So he may not pitch five innings, but I don't care if a guy strikes out eight guys in four innings. Um, and that's what he's done so far, basically. I mean, he had eight strikeouts in four innings and seven strikeouts in four innings. But they weren't pulling him because of the innings. They're pulling him because he got in trouble in the fifth in the second game. And in the first one, he uh, he was on, and you know, he's probably on a pitch count and he threw 83 pitches. But that's basically as much as anybody else has thrown. So <laughs> it's not like I can hold it against him. So I do think McClanahan is an elite, elite, elite option against just a, a really just an absolutely god awful Cubs offense. I mean, just it's like they are going to be look back in the season and they're going to, we're going to be shocked at how bad these guys are. They're really bad. So I, I do like McClanahan. Anyway. Um, all right. Milwaukee and Pittsburgh, what you got? So if I guess hitting first, um, there are a couple of uh, pretty natural pivots off of, uh, off of, uh, off of what you would call it, whoever plays Colorado, um, uh, Philadelphia. And uh, Milwaukee certainly one of them. I have them actually at the really close to the top of my pivot of my pivot list um, as, 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 as my hitting stat. Um, in addition to that, uh, Eric Lauer, I have as kind of a secondary option on DraftKings, but a, a better option, I guess, point per dollar wise on FanDuel. I figured I would just throw that. And I very rarely remember to do that um, mm. to, to, to let you guys know. So I currently have Lauer as a much better play on FanDuel I mean, just from a points per dollar perspective, then on DraftKings. Um, as a matter of fact, as of now, I have Lauer as the best point per dollar play on FanDuel. Um, but on uh, DraftKings, I have him as kind of a secondary play. And as I said, uh, Milwaukee rates for me to be a very, uh, very one of the at, near the top of the heap as far as the non Philly uh, stacks over there on DraftKings for sure. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's always weird for me when we when we try to assess a stack without knowing who's pitching. Um, because it doesn't, it feels like there's something we're missing, you know, right? Like it doesn't, I don't, I don't, it doesn't feel good to me. Like you probably have Zach Thompson, who knows if he's going to be treated basically as a, I don't know the, the way I, I've got, I mean, like DraftKings doesn't even have a pitcher for this game for, for Pittsburgh. So I don't know what's happening with their pitcher. I'd like to figure that out before I decide who's a good stack and who's not. Now, having said that Pittsburgh doesn't have a whole lot of talent. Actually, Zach Thompson, I would say is. I don't know, arguably one of their better pitchers. I don't, I don't really know. Like it's, it's, it's a pretty ugly team in general. Um, yeah. I could, I could possibly get behind Milwaukee later in the day. I don't understand why Lauer is projecting so well on FanDuel. Um, it's our DraftKings. He's 9,200. I mean, are we really going to be the kind of people who play Eric Lauer over McClanahan and they're both facing horrible offenses? I don't think so. It just doesn't feel right. Right. So I don't know. I, I would leave McClanahan over Lauer. I don't mind using some Lauer. I think he actually, the one, the one encouraging thing you saw from him is yeah, he didn't pitch well in his first start, but he was trying to get through five. He threw 89 pitches. That's more pitches than most of these pitchers have thrown this season. Um, and you're facing Pittsburgh, which is always a, a nice little treat. Um, but I, I actually like Milwaukee and I wouldn't even mind if you wanted to, th I, I mean, I like Milwaukee depending on who starts, but either way, I'm probably still going to end up liking him because like I said, they don't have a whole lot of good guys on the other side. Um, I don't mind if you if anybody wanted to play anybody as a one off from Pittsburgh against Lauer just because no one's going to own them. Just throwing that out there, but not not a priority for me. Milwaukee would be the the most interesting thing. And again, I still want to know who's pitching first. Um, what do you think about this Houston and Angel LA game, the Angels? Uh, neither pitcher really shows up for me, um, but I do have interest in in both of the hitting. Um, I, obviously, I would like it if Mike Trout plays. Uh, that would that would help. <laughs> I'm sure. He um, will. Oh, you don't think he will? They said okay. they expect him to be out today. I, I wouldn't. Oh, have... I didn't even know that. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I got. I mean, I don't want to play that. I don't want to do that. Then. But uh, on the on the Houston side, I mean, they're they're in a dome, I guess, or outside or something, and they still have. They're in dome. They still have some good hitters, and and I I, I don't know who this Lorenzen guy is, but. I don't know. I mean, Houston, again, just looking for for, for non-Philly stacks, it seems though Houston to be certainly reasonable. I just kind of, you see where I, where I am. I have like 
a whole bunch of DraftKings options below Philly that I'm going to be like just kind of, uh, you know, ownership picking and just seeing what, what kind of fits and stuff. And Houston is just part of this whole like glut of teams that I think have to be somewhat relevant. But I still think that Houston, maybe, am I wrong about this? I still think that Houston, for whatever reason, is probably owned because of name value, maybe more from some of the other teams. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I, I definitely like Houston as, 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 as a pivot. Yeah, it's really hard to know what to do with Michael Lorenzen because the guys, I think he's actually talented. Yeah. Um, I, I, he looked, I mean, phenomenal his last start. He's had one of the better starts of the season. And again, I was against Miami, but I, I agree that it is, you do want to get exposure to, to some of these Houston bats when you can, especially against righties um, with the way their lineup currently shakes out. Um Lorenzen threw 90 pitches and threw six innings, had seven strikeouts as last as his first start. I think you have one or two hits. Uh, doesn't feel like something we should be overly excited about. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I, I do like this getting exposure to these Houston bats, and we expect pretty concentrated ownership in, uh, in Colorado, especially on the Philly side. Um, so I, I personally am uh, – I, I don't know, though. If Houston doesn't get owned at all – I definitely think that's a really good pivot. I'm going to actually make a note of that. Now, it keeps not working for me. And by the way, this is not the same Houston team. I just want to make this really clear. This is not the same lineup that we've seen for the last few years. We keep talking. And I feel like that maybe that's my issue with Houston, is I feel like they're getting over-projected every slate because they're, they think everybody thinks they're nine deep and all of the bottom of their lineup is gone. Now, we do think Jeremy Pena is going to be really good someday uh, soon. Uh, Chaz McCormick, whatever, Maldonado, not much of a hitter. Uh, Brantley, not what he used to be. Certainly not, no, no power. Guriel, no power. So really leaves you with like four good hitting options. Um, it's just interesting to think about them as a stack. Like, so I'm just, you know, I, I like Houston. The, the run total might seem a little over projected, but at the same time, if you have the second highest run total on the slate and you're projected, I mean, early projections have them at like less than 5% owned each. Yeah, we probably should take some stock shots, at least as a mini stack. So I'm, I'm still up in the air with that one. I'll probably have a better idea, but I do have Houston on my list for right now. Um, Philadelphia, Colorado. Uh, I, I can just tell you one thing I know I'm going to do today, and I am absolutely, whatever, however many lineups I end up making or whatever I end up doing, assuming that, that, that there's no weird pop-up storm in, in, in Colorado, I am absolutely going to play Aaron Nola. Uh, I don't care. I just, I just don't care enough. Like I, when everybody's going to get not play people because they're in a stadium, I'm just going to be the guy who does. Uh, it's what I've always done. I am going to do it here. And I know I'm going to do that. And I think the Phillies are obviously the top stack on the slate by like a lot. It's just hard to try to figure out how to get any of them at low ownership. Uh, but I really like the idea of playing Nola. Yeah. So just so you guys know, um, um, you know, we don't, we don't talk about uh, the slate beforehand um, at all. And, you know, I didn't know whether, uh, whether he was going to see, and I also don't know whether Bobby's going to ask me first to, to start with the game or whether yeah. he's going to take it first. I'm really not. Sorry. I, was, I, can, I can get more structured with that. I like to sort of, Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect okay. this way because if he asked, so what do you think of this Philly game? I was, I was going to say probably something like, you know, I really just don't care. I'm just going to play freaking Aaron Nolan. I mean, like literally, literally just like that. I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm like, uh, um, and I'm like, well, his last game, he was, he, he, you know, three, three hits, three runs, three and a third innings, you know, excellent. Terrific. That's good. Fine. So nobody will play him. Nobody will play him. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and the game before that six innings pitched four runs, maybe no was completely finished. And you know what? He's playing in Colorado. Good. Let him be 5% ownership. It's fine by me. So I will, I'll, I'm with you. <laughs> and, and if it's four nothing in the first inning, I'll look at what other lineups I have going on. You know, no big deal. So, but not only that, but if it's four nothing in the first inning, he can still get 10 strikeouts by the time he leaves the game. So, so that's fine too. So I, I, I totally agree. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm totally in there. Um, I will also say that Philadelphia is, like you said, it rates to be a, you know, the top stack on the board by a lot. And I'm probably, you know, not going to play all that much. Of it. <laughs> that's, that's the way it's going to have to be. Um, I will probably do what Bobby is, is really good at and maybe pick some two mans from the Philly side or some, you know, some lower, you know, some six eights or some, you know, non-strung together guys or something like that. 
to make it work and get, maybe get a little different that way. Remember, like ownership is, is, is cited in terms of players, not in terms of combinations, you know, like, like, and they don't, and they don't have ownership projections on how much the one, three, four is going to be, you know, particularly, you know, they'll say how much the one is and how much the three is and how much the four is, but they don't project how much the one, three, four is, or likewise the one, three, five. And that would be an interesting uh, way to pr project ownership, by the way. Um, anybody that's got the, got the, got the technology for that. But uh, so, yeah, that's probably where I'm going to take, take Philly is try to just, you know, I would probably, I, I spoke at length about how I really don't like to use manual rules, but in a situation like this, I probably do like, like max two from Philly or something like that, like in my lineups, because if I didn't do that and I used any kind of optimizer, I would get like eight Phillies. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so if I put like max two, uh, I think that might be good to maybe do something funny. Like I was just kind of alluding to like, don't have any with like consecutive consecutive batting together. You know what I mean? Make sure it's a one three or two four or something like that. That's a way to get different and still and still get access to it's obviously a great environment game. Yeah, I if if anybody on this team is less than thirty percent owned, I think that they're awesome plays. I, I don't mind fully like. I don't know. They're they're just so far ahead of every other stack on the slate for me. Like. Um, and I think you can get some lower ownership. I don't know if people are going to want to pay 4.8 for DD batting seventh. I don't know if they're going to play Simon Muziati, who, uh, who I know about as little about as I usually do about any athlete that I'll ever say their name because usually it's like, the, it's like the way I talk about the basketball players sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I don't usually like to do that because I, I like to try and do my, I, I, I just think you can get low ownership on these bottom of the order and they're cheap. It makes it easy to fit in with the top. Now that's what everybody's going to do. I, I don't mind. What I can do is maybe go to a four man stack and at least be a little bit different. It's going to make me nervous not to have that fifth one though, because I, I just, I, I don't want to play the chalky stacks. You know, we've talked about this stuff before. Uh, it's really hard though, for me to, I mean, you have the wind blowing out. It's warmer weather than it is almost anywhere else. Like, uh oh, <laughs> I don't know, man. It just feels like a, like something's happening. And, and Philly is the kind of team that, that, yeah, they'll have their struggles, but, they've got enough patient hitters that they can just keep that lineup churning between Hoskins and Harper. Like these guys walk a million times and, you know, Segura who gets a hit 30% of the time because he's, he's a legit like 300 hitter basically. I don't know. I just feel like we should be, we should be on these guys and maybe just trying to find a different way to stack it. Maybe going with like a seven, eight, nine, I don't know, three or something like that. I don't know. Just like one chalky guy. And then the other one's like the lower end of the bunch. But I, I do think like my priorities will be those bottom of the order Camargo, Musliotti, and uh, Gregorius, just because it's the only way to really get different in the stack that I just think is significantly better than everybody else. But again, I'm, I, I'm it's still early in the day. I don't need to commit to a full stack yet. I just think that it it does feel hard to avoid Philadelphia, um, at least. And like you said, the two man thing, I think it's a bad. I think it's a fine idea too. Um, maybe today I would go a little higher with my how much I would have of them, just because. I just think they're going to, there's going to be a couple guys on that team who put up a monster game, at least, if not everybody. Um, also, I like, again, I, I want to stick with this, this trend of picking on the bad teams because their bullpens and the people they're putting out there are going to be far worse than the good teams. It's pretty simple, but uh, anyway. All right. Cincinnati and San Diego. Um, you have the, the, uh, the other guy who didn't get his chance at a no hitter. The, oh no! Yeah, that's right. He didn't know. He had he give a hit the one walk, and they pulled him. Seven innings and no hits. Uh, his last is uh, his first start of the season for Manaya. His last time out, he looked really good against the Giants, who are a tough team to face. Uh, we've seen we you know as much as yeah they pulled him after those innings. Like, hold on, why is this not working? Why am I not pulling up my numbers on Manaya? Um, I I think that like he, mid eighties pitches is I think is what we should expect, and I guess there's a chance to throw ninety maybe, but. The only thing that worries me is like, I don't, I don't know. I, I like Manaya. He's going to be chalky. Um, uh, Cincinnati is not like, I don't know. I, I, these are not like the worst hitters. It, it's not a great lineup, but it's guys who have historically been decent enough against lefties. They do have four lefties projected in the lineup. If that happens, then I would definitely make Manaya my priority starting SP one, but I don't know what they're going to end up, what kind of lineup we're going to end up seeing from them. And we won't know until after lock. So I, uh, currently I like Manaya, I guess is where I'm at. And on the other side, 
I think San Diego has been, you know, that looks shaky a little bit and there's a lot of guys, you got some cheap guys over here, man. And to me, this would, this would be another one of those, one of those at least uh, complimentary stacks that we should consider. Um, so that's where I'm at in this game. Who to stack San Diego? Yeah. So I have a couple of thoughts. Number one is, um, yeah, from on a projection basis, Montas rates to be one of the top two um, point per dollar plays on the slate, and as a result, he's going to be owned. Uh, I think you're, you got the wrong game. Uh, you mean Manaya? Manaya, sorry. I've, well, hold that thought. Um, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> we'll get there in a minute. So, right. So Manaya is going to be one of the top uh, two point per dollar plays on the slate, huh? um, and uh, he's going to be owned accordingly. But then interestingly, uh, I would say that that the Cincinnati hitters are, are being priced as if they're facing Sandy Koufax. You know, like, like the Reds guys are really, really cheap. You know, um, I just figured I would throw that out there. Like I said, they don't have the – they're not like uh, – Because they, none of them hit, though. I get it. But, <laughs> but all, I mean, everyone except for Votto is a platoon player. Oh, so these guys aren't playing anymore? Like Naquin and – Naquin's a platoon player. He's never but Votto. Steve. If Naquin against the lefty would be like the, oh, I mean, Sinzel. I don't even remember that he's never Sinzel. playing against the lefty. I guess so. Sinzel is out. So, I, I'm, yeah, it's, uh, maybe. Moustakas, he'd see play. He's a lefty, I guess. But He's anyway. a lefty batting seventh because he hasn't hit in a year and a half. But I still, I still am on the side of keeping the, playing him, but like not against. Does Colin Moran get in? Does he play? He's not a lefty. lefty that would never play against lefties in the historically. So, so it's even worse. They're even worse than platoon players. They're platoon players playing against the wrong hand. Maybe, uh, maybe you can get Johnny Bench back and Joe Morgan to play. Tyler maybe. Stevenson. We can go with Tyler Stevenson. I believe he's Tyler actually Stevenson. somewhat talented. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's he's a you know Minaya is probably a really good play. And and let me let me suggest this to you. I mean, like you want to play Philadelphia's. Um, yeah, you could stack San Diego, but you want to play. How about playing the other guy? How about playing the rookie at six K for Cincinnati? to make it so that you can get these Philly guys in. Um, I don't know, just uh, just something to do. I mean, like, I, I, I want to test your theory about these prospects. You know, if the prospects are any are, are supposed to be good, they probably are or something. And then maybe the first first outing wasn't that, that good. So give him another shot at 6K for no other reason than to hope he survives or whatever. Who knows? Maybe he does decently. And then you can get in your, your 6K, you know, Philly guys. I don't know, just something to think about. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I get it. I, I um. I, I, I don't think it's the worst. I mean, I just would rather, I know they're, they're different prices, but if I'm going to play a low owned pitcher, I can get, you know, one of the best upside pitchers in all of baseball at no ownership. So in NOLA. So I, I think I would rather do that. Oh, I know, but I mean, I suppose I'm, I'm talking about like a $6,100 guy. I just don't know what I need the 6,100. I mean, to, like the Philadelphia, Phillies. Yeah, play the, to play the Phillies. I mean, you don't want to play that part of the Phillies because you want to okay. try and get the low owned guys, which are going to be the cheap guys. You know what I'm saying? Like that's my okay. theory anyway. But I, I, you know, like the, the, it's not a, it, I don't know. I, I get it. I get it. I just, I, 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 there's, there's an upside there. Like, I mean, the, the kid is supposed to be talented. I think that it, it ends badly more than it ends well for him here, which is why I liked a little bit the San Diego side of it. Um, especially guys like, like Nola and uh, Machado, Voight, uh, even Myers, even though he's, I feel like I just play this guy at cheap and he never does anything for me, but um, yeah, I, I'm on the other side, but I definitely get where your thinking is coming from completely. All right. So what do you want to, what do you want to talk now? Now we can talk about your guy Montas. Well, it's ridiculous. I mean, this price 7,300. Why is he 7,300? <laughs> I mean, I thought the Cobb was, it was, I mean, like, like, like Montas is ridiculous um, at 7,300. This is why um, no one's going to play Aaron Nola. <laughs> this is why, uh, this is why no one's going to play because they're going to play Montas and, and I, I would say Cobb, Montas and Manias so they can get to the Phillies. Um, and, uh, and we're going to play NOLA and find value somewhere else. Maybe some, maybe some cheap Dodgers, maybe, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But, um, uh, I kind of, I mean, I like Montas, <laughs> like I just said, I mean, him and Min Minai are the two chalkiest player players and they, they rate to be the top plays. I'm certainly not going to play both of them with the Phillies. And like I said, um, if I play the two of them together, it's probably going to be with stuff like the Dodgers or something else or Houston. Um, that's what's going to end up doing. I, I, I kind of want to play. Um, kind of want to play Oakland though. That, that that's that's kind of what I'm interested in a little bit. You know, and this this uh, this this Watkins character is not is not particularly good. And Oakland, I don't know. Some, bullpen, yeah, bullpen game. Oh, is that right? They're, they're well, like well, splitting, they like split like they're trying to split like five or six innings between here. Right, well, I'm not. You know, if I have to worry about the Baltimore bullpen, I mean, I'm, 
Um, but uh, but but I don't know. Oakland they they put up double digit runs a couple of times this season. I mean they're not that bad, and they're not looking for something else to do besides uh besides the chalk. I got I got no problem playing a little bit of Oakland here. But in general, yes, Montas is probably one of the best plays. Um, and uh, probably gonna I mean, again. But if you play him, I would play him with low own with low own stacks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it's really, it's a tough fade. Uh, I love Montas in general for DFS because especially early in the season for this, because I think it's not that his leash is longer, but what he has is he doesn't walk anybody. So you take a guy who doesn't walk anybody, it makes it just, just a lot easier for him to work deeper into games. Now he will give up some hits because he's not walking anybody, but that's okay. Like, I mean, he's good strikeout rate. He's thrown, he's, he's, I think he might have thrown the most pitches of anybody in baseball so far. He threw 92 and 89 his first two starts. That's like throwing 130 a couple of years ago. Um, so I, I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm, I don't under, the only argument against Montas is ownership. Um, I, I think that even this, like I'm looking at early projections of like the 40% range. I think he ends up like 80% owned in the 777 or things like that. I really do. Um, Especially if that Met game gets rained out. Yeah. It just doesn't make it. Yeah. Yeah, he's just a, I mean, he's a good play against a team that we love to pick on and uh, usually for good reason. So uh, on, the, on the flip side, though, like I, I do like the Oakland idea, but I don't know, you know, like, like guys like Seth Brown, who no one's really going to have much interest in are, I, I think this kid's talented and, and I want to find like some, some, some weird spots. The problem is you can end up getting that quick hook because he might end up only getting two at bats, which they've done a couple times so far this season. And that's a little bit concerning, uh, but Sheldon noose, these are not fun names. Like, I mean, that's our Dodger guy. He's got a, the guy's got a lot of power, man. I've watched this guy take batting practice a bunch of times and it is crazy. He had a home run in a game. I was at, that was 460 feet and it was freezing. So I was like, I was just shocked. I mean, maybe it wasn't that far. I mean, 450 plus, whatever it was. Um, yeah, I think there's some argument for the Oakland side. Sure. And I want to pick on bullpens in general at Baltimore, you know, but it's just, Again, when you get a guy going for three innings and another guy going for three innings, it's not really an optimal situation for a stack. So I would I would try to treat this as more of a secondary stack personally than I would a full stack. But I do think it's an interesting secondary stack. And I really like, as much as I like Montas, the one thing I said, this guy will give up contact. So if you're going to find a one-off, maybe an Oakland, maybe a Baltimore one-off would be a good way to get different than the field, whether that be Santander, Austin Hayes. Probably Mancini would be number one, followed by Santander and Hayes. I don't love using my first base spot. Um, even a guy like Odor, like I just don't mind taking a one shot on any of these guys because Montas will pitch to contact. Um, obviously, oh, Cedric Mullins, I forgot to mention, but he's, he's, he's pricey. All the other guys are super cheap and could fit in with any stacks you're looking at to do. So that's where I am there. Okay, Sheets, what are we going to do here? Because do people really think that everyone's going to play – Kershaw 10-3 this time. I mean, because he was unbelievable. Looked perfect, obviously. Um, are people going to react to the fact that they didn't let him even go for it at all? Like, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm confused on this one. This is one where I feel like it's hard for me to gauge what people are going to do with Kershaw. Not to mention that while Atlanta hasn't been the same, and they're certainly not the same lineup quite as they will be later in this year, and they're not what they were last year, it does feel like her shot high ownership is something I could try to take a chance at avoiding. Um, makes me nervous to say it because I want every part of me wants to believe that, that he's, he's, I mean, he's been great every year. It's not like he's never, ever bad, but the stuff he looked, the way he looked the other day was like 10 years ago, Kershaw, like it was incredible. Um, so I'm stuck a little bit on this, on the pitching side. And I love the Dodger stack. Where do you stand with this one? So what I have a favor, I need to ask the, uh, the person, uh, you need to ask the, the, the computer in your, in your, in your apartment uh, the important question of the day, right? Hey, Google, what will the temperature be at Dodger Stadium at 8 p.m.? Well, I guess that's always something that we need to know. Right now in Dodger Stadium, Not right it's 60 now. degrees and sunny. Hey, Today, Google. It will be partly cloudy with a forecasted. Hey, Google, what will the temperature at Dodger Stadium be at 8 p.m.? It's 60 degrees and sunny there. I don't know why Today, it's doing this. It'll be partly cloudy <laughs> with a forecasted high of 74 and a low of 56. Yeah, I think it's uh, my my guess. Let me take a quick look. I think it's going to be warmer. It's I got it at 65 right now. I don't know. I could see it getting a little warmer than that. It's pretty clear out here. And usually these days tend to tend to tend to go like that. But if the wind picks up. Maybe I don't know. It's uh, so, so I like so I like the Dodgers. Um, 
I'll start with that. Uh, I always, you know, like, like, I mean, you always like the Dodgers. I, mean, I always like the Dodgers. Uh, they, 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 they're always a pivot off of Colorado. Um, always. Um, and when you get the Dodgers as, the, as not the highest owned stack on the board, it's always worth, worth considering. Obviously there's a reason why they're not going to be the highest owned because as you mentioned several times, the Philly stacks does rate to be the best performer. It just is. Um, but uh, and Noah's no, and Noah's not bad. I have no problem with that. I'm not playing in, in, in Noah, but um, you know he's not a, you know he's not bad. So it's not like Dodgers have a cupcake matchup. But you know Dodgers are great. Regarding Kershaw, I mean, I, I, I when I was talking about Manaya and the Reds are price that they were you know facing Sandy Koufax, you know, I feel sort of bad for Sandy Koufax. I mean, who'd have thought he'd end up being like the second best lefty in Dodger history? You there know, you go. Like, I love to hear it. Like crazy, you know. Like, Who'd have thought that, you know? Uh, and that's uh, that's just that's just the way it is, man. Like, nothing, nothing against Kofax, you know. But yep. the Kershaw is ridiculous. I mean, you look at yeah, and, and listen. I hate to make this whole thing about just talking of Kershaw, but you know, I I was out of baseball like rooting for a while. But as I got back into it, I kind of looked at some of the stats like over the, like the last however long he's been in the league. I mean, they're just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's, the, it's a strikeout to walk ratio. It's just something like you're never going to see like ever. OK, and it's just obscene. And and look, whatever issues he had with his, whatever it is, he came back and I had a feeling and I didn't know he, he really smashed, but they were talking about him coming into the start like he was stretched out. He threw 72 pitches, whatever it is, and he is ready to go. And since I've been doing DFS, I can't remember a time where I was not worried about Kershaw being hurt. Every seemed like every single season, I'm like, is he hurt? Is he hurt? Is he hurt for this? Is he hurt for that? His back? His, you know what I mean? Like, whatever. And. As we listen, as we saw with Verlander, you know, as we saw with some of these elite guys, they can pitch freaking lights out well into their freaking thirties, you know, and, 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 and Kershaw, if he's like legit healthy and he's going through that last start without walking anybody, you know, or whatever. And I'll, all I'll say is this, is that not to even put it in the same sentence as Trey Young is ridiculous, but only because I use the same same terms. You fade Kershaw at your own risk, okay, um, at 10-2, all right? It's possible that that game was an outlier and he's going to, you know, he's older, he's going to come back to reality and he's going to be putting up 20 fantasy points a game, whatever it is. But if, 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 if one day later in the season, he's like 11-4, you know what I mean? Like whatever it is, you're going to say, wow, I had a chance to get him a 10-2 coming off of a, a performance where he just like basically hit a ceiling performance with, in, a, in a tuxedo without even having to freaking try, you know? Right. Um, so I have to say that I, first of all, to answer your question, I don't think people are playing. Um, that, that's, that's, my, that's my first my first comment is the only reason people will play him is because of name value, because they always play him, right? But I, but, but I don't think the sharper people are going to play him. You know, I think the I think in the seven seventy seven or whatever it is, I think he's going to be much lower owned there than in the uh, mm-hmm. than, in, than in the lotteries. That's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. And everybody is going to go for those for the Montas um, Manaya thing. I don't think any. I really I don't see anybody. I just think that Kershaw, if he is going to be owned, it's going to be owned by the people that you want to compete against. You know, um, and I I have no problem getting some of that. Yeah, we'll see. I guess. Um, I- you know, I've, I've got him fourth, um, which feels weird to say, but partly it's because I'm playing Nola, like basically at the same price because I want to be different. I need, if I'm going to play some Philly, I need to get different somehow. Um, I, I like him. Like there's five pitchers to me that I'll be using today. And uh, Nola, Manaya, Montas, McClanahan, and Kershaw. Um, I don't know what order those are going to fall for me, but that's the guys who I've got. Again, you have some soft hitting prices so you can afford to spend up. Uh, I'll tell you what, one, thing, one other thing to, to keep in mind about Kershaw before he got hurt last year was the second best swinging strike rate he ever had in his career last year. Um, he's absolutely not wearing down the, 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 the BS narrative that goes around him. There's, there was a great article written, I think it was 538 did it there. Six pitches, if you took six pitches away from him, he'd probably be considered the greatest, arguably the greatest pitcher of all time. And it was, it was all those postseason ones. He's also the, he's also the, the best pitcher in the history of closeout games in the history of How is he not the best, at least the best left-hander of all time? He's, I mean, because well, I guess it's Andy Koufax for eight years was literally unhittable. But 
So that's the only thing. But but Kershaw has done it for for we're coming up on we're getting to, getting to twenty in a minute. Like you know what I mean? A few more years, we'll be and you doing this. We'll be talking about Kershaw in his twentieth year. Um, uh, the Dodgers. I'm just gonna say though that we had, we talked about this a little bit in Discord the other day. I just want to talk about the Dodgers stack. It, there are some teams that we can make the argument for stacking every day, and there's teams that have a better way of getting you there. The Dodgers are one of these teams. There's power in this lineup between Betts and, and Turner. We have speed now, and Freeman even steals bases as well. Um, this is just by far. I mean, I'm, this is not a homer take. If you took me and every, I mean, I swear you could you could ask me anytime. This team is so much better than every other team in baseball. It actually feels like it should be unfair. The truth is that's been the case for a number of the last 10 years. Doesn't mean you're going to win the title. You might lose Muncy and Kershaw before your postseason matchup with Atlanta, and that could kill you, cost you a series and not winning the World Series um, like, it did, like it did last year. But this team is so loaded and so deep and just, just in my opinion, so much better than every other team in baseball that every matchup is going to look great to me. Is it Noah a bad pitcher? No, he's fine. But a fine right-handed pitcher against the Dodgers is like a terrible pitcher against every other team. Um, you have to be awesome to beat these guys. And uh, I really, really, really think they're strong. I have the Dodgers right now as my second favorite stack to Philly. Don't think there's anything unusual about that. I'm going to mix in some Milwaukee, San Diego, and Houston's. But I'm going to have to try and find a way to get off of some of the Philly chalk. And the problem is I can't just pivot right over to the Dodgers because I think that's what other people will do although the early projected ownership for them is pretty low. So uh, if the ownership on the Dodgers stays low, I don't have any problem making the Dodgers my four and five man stacks and my, the Phillies, my, my two or three man, two to four man stacks. So that's where I'm at on this slate. And I mentioned the pitchers I'm using and guys will be live at six Eastern. Hopefully we have a big day. Uh, Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't know if there was something else I wanted to say about the Dodgers. I guess I, I guess not. Um, Go ahead, you can say it. I know I wanted to I want to look at my fan duels for a second to make sure I didn't uh, on fan do. Oh, so yeah. So what I was going to say is that is that you have you know I have Kershaw right now projected about twenty percent ownership, and I have um, Lauer projected about twenty percent ownership, like both on DraftKings. I'm just going to have to try to find a 1300. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like if I'm going to play Lauer, I mean, so, so let's say I don't play $6,200 Philly, maybe I'll play a $5,000 Philly guy, you know, whatever it is. Right, you know? right. Like um, I, I'm just going to have to try to find a way to find the 1200. If it's between those two at equal ownership, that's just the way, the way, that's what, like I say, that's the way it's going to have to be on FanDuel. Um, I talked about draft teams, um, FanDuel, Lauer, I had best over there, then Mons Husmanaya. Phillies, Dodgers, and Angels. And yeah, okay. I just want to make sure I had that. Dodgers over on FanDuel is really, really strong as well. So I will touch really quick on FanDuel some plays because I, I do want to do this at the end of the shows. Uh, Luis Garcia is the best play, in my opinion, on FanDuel. Um, and he's a guy we didn't mention. And I know I say price doesn't matter, but when you, you get down to 6,700 for a guy with a decent oh I don't know God. if he's the best play, but he's, he's the natural first thing my, my eye goes towards. Everybody else is looking at Lauer. I would probably, I'd rather play Luis Garcia against a righty dominated lineup without Mike Trout uh, than I would Lauer. But you could, you could, you could argue either way. Uh, Montas, Kershaw, Manaya, all still, and McClanahan all still in play over there. But I like the idea of trying to get the six innings uh, if I can. I don't think it's very likely. But Montas gives you the best odds to get those six innings. Nice. As far as hitters go, um, it's still going to be very hard not to play Philadelphia over here. But you've got some other guys that stand out from, from a little bit of a, of a pricing standpoint that I thought I'd mention. Uh, Rowdy Tella is at, at 2.4K. Um, he's going to be he, – he should be owned somewhat. He's 2.4, and it's, it's the Milwaukee matchup. You know, we, we, we like that Milwaukee team a little bit today. Yelich is going to stand out. I am having a hard time clicking the Yelich button these days, um, but maybe I need to, to, to just understand that eventually he'll be back to being there. I actually didn't see what he did over the weekend. So for all I know, he just hit like seven home runs. Um, no, he still doesn't hit a home run this year. It, that was the trend last year. So it's a little worrisome for me, um, but mostly it's just even easier to play the Philly guys over here than it is on DraftKings for me. Um, other guys like Nervai, like you can play a Nervaez, Tellez owner uh, together, kind of a lineup and get different with a Milwaukee Philadelphia stack. And that's, I know I mentioned that a lot, but you have the catcher in the first baseman. And I think it's kind of an interesting way you can kind of get different. I think FanDuel, I find more interesting these days because I think there's a lot you can do with lineup construction uh, instead of necessarily, you know, just trying to make the best plays. I think you can, you can get funny in your stacks by lineup construction and get like two guys at 2% if you just, who, out of a popular stack. 
Um, so that's something I'm looking to do today. Just just to show you guys, by the way, I mean, like just just for just for kicks, I put in. Um, uh, sorry, I put in uh, Montas and Manaya, and I just jam these Philly guys. Now, I don't even know who's does bomb start. No, I mean, no, no. Okay, so even if you I don't even um, know if he's in the major leagues right now. Oh, really? Even if I, you start with these four, been. I mean, you could do this like pretty easily if you play Montas and Manaya. So that's why I think that's what I was gonna say is that I think these guys are good play. Sorry, Sheets. I didn't realize Baum was playing a little bit. They're just platooning every, it's just a platoon player, but that means he should probably, no, he wouldn't, would he play today? No, I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, no, he wouldn't play today normally, but he might, you never know. <laughs> well, who would start the third base then? Um, well, the other guys, the guys, the, the projected starting lineup is, let me grab it real quick. Stott? No, um, no, I think it's like all outfielders. Um, I don't think they have a third baseman. Oh, oh, I'm just looking at who's eligible. Oh, Camargo, days. Camargo. And he's 2,600? Yeah. So my yeah, point it, is, it, is it, that. It's the easiest thing in the world to get Philly in. You could put this, you could make the pitchers 20K and you can get Philly in. <laughs> right. Because you could play Camargo, you could play the Mizliotti, who who's projected to, to bat nine, and he's 2,600. Um, and then you could play any of, uh, here are some other cheap ones who stood out, uh, Luke Voigt. Um, oh, boy, too, right? Stevenson, Gregorius. Oh, Gregorius is just a good play. I don't have him as that. Uh, there's, just, there's just cheap plays. Will Myers. There's just like cheap plays all over the place today, um, which is sort of the case with baseball sometimes. So anyway, it should be a fun slate, guys. We'll, uh, we're going to be back with a, ba a basketball show shortly. And uh, good luck to everyone tonight. We'll see you at 6 Eastern. And don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And also, if you aren't a member of the Saber Sim yet, we ch check out the video we did with them and, and see what you think, because I think that we did a good job. And I think that it was really, really helpful. Uh, in terms of some of the questions we've been getting asked from you guys. So good luck to everybody tonight and we'll see you soon.